All right, folks, we reached that part of the show now for a new segment we're going to be doing here on Thursday. It's called Opening This Week, where we just go over, remind you guys, and bring to your attention the films that are opening this week in theaters across the country. This Opening This Week segment is brought to you by, of course, our friends over at AMC Theaters. So, Ashley, what do we have opening this week? All right, first up is the newest Marvel film and the final movie of Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man. Forced out of his own company by former protege Darren Cross, Dr. Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, recruits the talents of Scott Lang, played by Paul Rudd, a master thief just released from prison who is desperate to reconnect with his daughter. Lang becomes Ant-Man, trained by Pym, and armed with a suit that allows him to shrink in size, possess superhuman strength, and control an army of ants. The miniature hero must use his new skills to prevent Cross, also known as his new alter ego, Yellow Jacket, from perfecting the same technology and unleashing it on an unprepared world. The film also stars Lost Evangeline Lilly, House of Cards, Corey Stoll, Michael Pena, and Bobby Cannavale. Next up is the R-rated comedy Trainwreck. Ever since her father drilled into her head that monogamy isn't realistic, <laughs> magazine writer Amy, played by Amy now Schumer, she says that all the time. <laughs> has made promiscuity her credo. As much as she enjoys an uninhibited life free of commitment, Amy is really in a rut. While writing a profile about charming and successful sports doctor Aaron Connors, played by SNL's alum Bill Hader, she finds herself actually falling in love for the first time, and what's more, Aaron seems to like her too. Amy starts to wonder if it's time to clean up her act. Trainwreck also stars NBA superstar LeBron James, WWE wrestler John Cena, Brie Larson, and Colin Quinn. All right, guys, should people be looking forward to either of these two films this week? This is actually a good weekend for, for, for new movies coming out. You've heard us talk a lot about Ant-Man, and, and you know we, we are, Mark and I have a review up for it. Uh, the, all, the three of us here, we've got a spoiler review that's going to be up on Friday. So once you've had a chance to see the movie, you can watch a spoiler review. And if you've heard us talk, you know, we... All of us at this table really, really enjoy Ant-Man. It's a very different kind of film, but thoroughly entertaining. I think kind of Michael Pena kind of steals the show a little bit in that. Michael Douglas is awesome in it. Paul Rudd. I was nervous. As much big of a fan as I am as Paul Rudd, would he fit in in this pantheon of Marvel superheroes? Damn right he does. Uh, just across the board. So, yes, I would recommend running out to see that. And then the new movie, Trainwreck. I didn't know what to expect out of this movie. And... There, it's gotten the high 90s, I think, right now on Rotten Tomatoes, the high 90s. I am not as gaga for that movie as a lot of people. I think the movie loses steam in the third act, but the first two acts are so funny, and the movie ends strong. Even though I'm not a big fan of the third act, the movie ends strong at the same time. That It, it ends up being, for me, a movie I highly recommend if people go out and see uh, uh, on that night. So what stands out to you guys? Um, I mean, for me, it was, it's, it's train wreck, to be honest. I mean, I've, been, I've been raving about Ant-Man for a bit, from visiting the set and all that stuff. It's been about a year. Yeah, yeah for, for me, I mean, you... This is like you said. This is a great weekend for movies. I think that if you're a Marvel fan and you were kind of hesitant about Ant Man, you'll love it. I think it's a really funny movie as well as it, the way it ties into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The reason I say Trainwreck is because, like you, John, I wasn't expecting anything. I'm not an Amy Schumer fan really at all. I don't. I, I don't enjoy her comedy, but she wrote this movie. And it is an extremely well-written movie. You get standout performances from LeBron James, mm -hmm. from John Cena. And Tilda That's the big surprise it was, was that LeBron James and John Cena were actually entertaining yeah, in that movie. And, yeah, and I mean, Colin Quinn's great. And Tilda Swinton, who I forgot was even in the movie. I had no idea right? that was her until right. somebody told me after the movie. Someone tweeted me, and I was like, wait, if she's not in it, Oh my God! Because she transforms, and she yeah. transforms into someone who she always plays with these eccentric, kind of weird characters. Right. And she's a normal, as normal as she can be in this particular role. But the the movie works. It's Apatow's best, I think, since Forty Year Old Virgin. So both movies are a must to see this weekend. I think a decision to be made is you got to go Ant Man because Ant Man, I think, is is almost is arguably as funny or funnier than Trainwreck. And I like Trainwreck a lot. I thought it was a really well done movie. It was different than what I thought it would be going into Ant Man. I was hoping it was going to be a great blend of action and comedy. That's exactly what I got. Going into Trainwreck, I was expecting something on the more raunchier side, like a Bridesmaids or even Ted, and I got a sweeter When Harry Met Sally story <laughs> with some really naughty jokes in there, but for the most part, I, I did I just say naughty? No. Who yeah. am I? You said I naughty. Know. That joke was naughty, Amy. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the poster. It says naughty, Mark Ellis. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I, I think you can't go wrong either way this weekend, but I would definitely steer you towards Ant-Man, and then if you have money left over, go to see Trainwreck. It's funny, because those reasons are the reasons I think that I like it, because I, I thought that that's exactly what was going to be, just raunchy, over-the-top, 
cop just naughty. beat you over the head with it. Naughty. Yeah. Um, but there was that heart and there was that heart to, to where it was a good movie. It's a good film. That's why I really was, I think, more surprised than I than I even thought I would be. But if, if you ask me which one would I rather see in the theaters, yeah, yeah, man, sure. But it's just because Trainwreck surprised me so much. You know that, that I don't hear very many people talking about it at all when it comes to Trainwreck. Bill Hader oh, delivers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, can Bill Hader be the romantic lead in, in, a, in a comedy like this? Yeah, he can. Yeah, it's funny that you say that too, because someone had tweeted something out. When I got the initial tweet, I'm like, "Come on, man, you're jumping, you're, you're jumping ahead of yourself." And it's like Bill Hader next Tom Hanks, and I'm like, "No, we don't." And I'm like, "Wait, well, here's the thing, and the reason why I even thought of this, you can compare this. You look at what Bill Hader's done on his career at Saturday Night Live with comedy, and he was great on Saturday Night Live, oh, yeah, standout character. Then he did something dramatic in Skeleton Twins, which right. he was great in. Then he did he was just a smaller role, but he was great in, in the disappearance of Eleanor Rigby. Um, and now he shows that he can hold a comedic lead. I don't I think it's too soon to put him in Tom Hanks character. Yes. But he's someone to watch. He's someone to look at. This guy's gonna have a long career. 